Hey everybody, it's Seth Jones, Editor-in-Chief of Landscape Management Magazine. Today I'm being joined by Mike Horak. Mike is the Commercial Leader for Outdoor Products, Wells Fargo Distribution Finance. I'll also add that Mike is a excellent golfer, even though he won't admit it. Mike, thanks for taking the time to uh, join me today. It's great to see you again. That's a, uh, that's a big bull lie on the golf thing. <laughs> Seth, Seth is the golfer here. <laughs> so uh, first, just uh, let's get to know you a little bit. Tell me about what you do. You bet. So Seth, I've been uh, part of commercial distribution finance, which uh, is a legacy company going back to Transamerica, GE Capital, and now the last five years with Wells Fargo. I'm the, uh, the commercial leader. Again, been, been involved with the business now for about 30 years. So primarily we are, um, I run a group, the Outdoor Products Group, that lends money into the lawn and garden industry. We've built up quite a nice uh, portfolio over the years. So we've been at it now for almost 40 years within the industry. And uh, primarily, it's about trying to get the equipment into the dealerships to get it to the end user. So the homeowner or the commercial landscaper can use all this great product to maintain their homes or commercial property. That's, that, that's the ultimate goal here. So, so Mike, you and I met at the, uh, the Outdoor Power Equipment Institute annual meeting up in, uh, in Wisconsin. And at that event, it felt like there was a lot of smiling faces. A lot of people were really enthusiastic. And you said the word trends. And so I thought maybe let's go down that path a little bit. Some of the things that you're seeing in terms of trends in the industry right now. You bet, Seth. The, uh, one, <laughs> I think one of the, the main trend is there's a lot more equipment being sold right now, right? You know, I think we're, you can refer to it as, the, well, one, this industry always revolves around wet weather patterns. And, and the weather has been favorable for the last couple of years with precipitation, uh, really no droughts to speak of in the primary areas where the equipment sold. So from a, a manufacturer and dealer perspective, we've seen that the, well, in, in, in aggregate, year over year, we're up about 30% in volume right now, Seth. So that's, that's quite a lift for our manufacturers to be that much over prior years volume. So, and we're also seeing liquidations up about over 20%. So those end users are coming in to buy that equipment from the dealers and the dealers are, are paying it off in the form of liquidations. Overall, the manufacturers have, have kept up with that. And the, and the dealers, um, you know, a lot of the orders right now that the dealers are placing are really just fulfilling end users uh, demand. So those, those orders essentially are already spoken for from a, you know, they're, they're pre-sold orders. And so <laughs> the, the idea right now is to make sure that those get through our financing pipe very quickly to get to the dealer and then to that end user. So there's a, there's a, I think a heightened um, transparency between the dealers right now and the OEMs as to what's going on in those local markets. Hey, they, they're, many dealers are holding deposits for um, those orders, and the OEMs have you know line of sight to that. And they're working very hard to fulfill. We don't have a crystal ball as to when that's going to end. Again, the weather patterns are holding up pretty well. Of course, if you have a a winter with absolutely no snow, that would that would impact you know snow equipment to some degree. But the commercial cutters and the commercial uh, folks are still going to you know have to get ready for that snow season by buying equipment um, in the commercial side. The, uh, the landscapers are, are pretty flush. They've had a good couple of years. So everything's working pretty well right now in the industry. And is there a certain type of product that you notice that's kind of hot or just like we in a new issue we talked about? Well, I've talked to some guys who are saying that they're really uh, like a mini excavator is something that they're really um, proud of and trying to get you know, we're talking, we had a, our cover story said that, uh, you know, the smaller equipment is kind of a thing right now based on, you know, residential small jobs where you can't, you don't want to take a fence out. You don't want to, you know, just, just the right tool for the right size project and whatnot. I'm just curious, is there anything that you're seeing, like that you say that maybe one category that you find interesting in the sense that it's uh, doing really well? Well, we do a lot of compact tractors as well. So that, that, that area is, is very hot. Um, I think anything that's selling into a, a homeowner that has, you know, an acre to five acres uh, is it's, 
they're buying all sorts of equipment, whether it's a, a post hole digger and a tractor, of course, to you know turn that with a PTO kit. But I, I would say the area that we're, we're seeing a lot of traction, even though it's um, still a smaller segment, is the the battery powered equipment. You know, that, that's on the consumer handheld side. You know, where you know much of that equipment now is battery pack operated, and a lot of homeowners whether it's noise abatement uh, regulations or emissions uh, regulations or just that in general, uh, a self-awareness of wanting to be a little bit more um, environmentally friendly. Those, those have gone up. I've, I would say in the last couple of years within this space, the battery operated equipment is probably the biggest trend that I've seen. Certain OEMs are getting into partnerships with, with battery companies. So I think it's ultimately it's the way to go. And I think the industry is trying to adapt uh, even faster right now.